الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد This is a continuation of the verse that I mentioned last week about the village that was by the sea where Allah told them not to fish and they transgressed in the Sabbath. So these verses come after that. This is from Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, verse 164. أو معذبهم عذابا شديدا قالوا معذرة إلى ربكم ولعلهم يتقون And when a community among them said Why do you advise a people whom Allah is about to destroy or to punish with a severe punishment They, the advisor said To be absolved before your Lord and perhaps they may fear him Now to advise is to remind of something you already know. When you advise a Muslim to pray, he knows that prayer is obligation, an obligation on him. So you're reminding somebody, you're not teaching, you're reminding. And that's what, uh, what the uh, mawaidah is. So an advisor warns when something wrong is happening and requires correction. That's when, when the advice is given. So when an advice is given, listeners will be in three different groups. So something's going on, somebody advises, you'll have, the listeners will be in three categories. One category that supports the advising, and it's worth, it's worth doing even if only a handful of people benefit. The second group rejects the advice and doubles down. There is no, you know, they're doing the sin and they don't want to stop. So if you try to advise them, they double down and you know they continue their behavior. And there's a third group that's indifferent. It's the none of my business group. It's the I don't care, it's not my problem. This is an indifferent group where they just sit on the sideline, they don't get involved. They're not participating in the sin, but not, not advising against it either. So they're you know, they're indifferent and they're neutral. A believer, when he sees something wrong, you must advise. You cannot sit, you cannot be quiet about it. You have to advise the people around you when you see something wrong, and you do it with wisdom and in the best manner. And that comes with experience, because sometimes you have to choose the time and choose the tone, because sometimes the, the, a, an advice given in the wrong manner at the wrong time, causes the opposite outcome. So you have to have some, some wisdom in giving, you know, in giving that, uh, that advice. So some may wake up and respond, and there's good, goodness in, 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 just, you know, in most people. They will listen, they will you know, heed the advice, and the advice does its job. But there are others who will be stubborn, and will double down. And for those, the next verse, verse 165, applies to them. Allah says, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ أَنْجَيْنَا الَّذِينَ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ السُّوءِ وَأَخَذْنَا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا بِعَذَابٍ بَئِيسٍ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ And when they, those advised, forgot that by which they had been reminded when they ignored it, we saved those who had forbidden evil and seized those who wronged with a wretched punishment because they were defiantly disobeying. So the ones who advise and correct, Allah will save them. And the ones who double down and insist on their sin, they invite Allah's punishment and destruction. It may be immediate, it may be after some time, but you're inviting God's correction when you, when you do that. So, the interesting thing about the verse is the group that was uh, questioning the advisors, you know, in the previous verse, is like, why are you, why are you uh, advising people Allah is going to, you know, going to destroy? Some commentators said that this group falls under the advisors because they're indirectly advising. So it's, it's as if they're encouraging the advisors to double their work. 
you know, don't waste your time on them. Allah is going to destroy them. And when people, they're going to be destroyed, I need to double my effort and save them. I mean, that, that, that is a viewpoint that these were among the people who saved. So the people who advised and the people who were telling them, you know, why are you doing this? Could be, you know, could be lumped among the saved group. But the, uh, we learn from the Quran as much from what is said, from what is not said. Where is the third group in these verses? Because Allah says he saved the ones who advised and destroyed the ones who sinned. What about the indifferent people? And that's the majority of the people, by the way. What, what happened to them? The verse doesn't say anything. And the lack of mention in the verse tells us they either were not important to mention because they didn't do anything to Allah, you know, for Allah. They did not do anything for Allah's sake, so they are not worth mentioning. And another viewpoint, it says that these people were destroyed along with, with, the, with the sinners. Now, these verses are in Surah Al-A'raf. And the main theme of Surah Al-A'raf is what is right and what is wrong are set. Take your position on the side of right and be serious. Take it seriously. So these people did not take it seriously. And if, if we look at another verse from Surah Al-A'raf earlier, talking about the tribe of Thamud, the people of, of uh, Sayyidina Salih alayhi salam. They wanted a miracle. They wanted a camel to come out from the boulder. And Allah gave them that. And, they, and, and the verse says, فَعَقَرُوا النَّقَةَ وَعَتَوْا عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِمْ This is in verse 77 in Surah Al-A'raf. Then they killed the she-camel defying the Lord's command. Now only one person killed, killed the, the camel. And the camel was Allah's miracle to this people. So they had the nerve to go in and kill Allah's camel. But the verse says, all of them. فَعَتَوْا It's in the plural. Because if you remain silent, you are complicit in the crime. They were all destroyed because they did not do anything to stop the person from killing the camel. They all approved of it implicitly. So they deserve to be punished. So if you want to save yourself, you cannot be on the sidelines when you see something wrong happening. You have to say something. You have to do something. You have to correct. You have to advise. You have to admonish. If you have the ability and the power to stop it, you should stop it. You should not take that attitude as these people let them go to hell. You're, you're, who are you helping by leaving these people go to hell? You're helping the devil. The job of the devil is to take all these sinners and deliver them to hell. Our job is to make sure that they go on the straight path and they don't doom themselves. That's what a believer does. You cannot sit on the sideline and say, the heck with them. You cannot. So, advise, admonish, correct, do whatever you can. And what does the verse say? Why, why did these people advise, even though they knew that maybe the result is not, is not going to happen? They wanted an excuse when they stand in front of Allah and says, I put you in a non-believing country like this. What did you do? You saw people around you going astray and making the good evil and the evil good. What did you do? 70% of the Muslims vote for them. Empower them to do this. Instead of standing up and say, no, you cannot do that. What's right is right and what's right is clear. You cannot make you know, females, males, and males, females, and sit there and say nothing. Pre do whatever you want in this life, but know that every each and one of us will stand one day in front of Allah alone, 
and you have to answer that question. What did you do? When you saw that happening, what did you do? Why did you do this and why didn't you do this? Do whatever you want, just prepare an answer for Allah.